Tut. Hello everybody and welcome back to Tip Tut and welcome back to the Big 100 Project tutorial. Uh, don't panic if you don't know what that is. Uh, it's just a competition that I'm running and this is a tutorial to help people create the content for it. However, it should still be useful for you if you're looking to learn how to do frame by frame animation and export it as a GIF inside of Photoshop. If you are here from the Big 100 Project, uh, great. If not, go check it out. There's a link in the description below. Uh, you might be too late though. Who knows? Let's just dive right in. Uh, first thing you're going to want to do is create a canvas. So we'll just do that. Um, onto that canvas, I'm just going to drop, for me, my section of the Big 100 tutorial. Again, if you don't know what that is, don't panic. It's nothing uh, too crazy going on here. Um, so I'm just going to crop this to the size of my image so that I know I've got a size that I want. And we're going to look at starting to make our animated GIF. Okay. Now the main window you'll need inside of Photoshop when making animations is the timeline window. If you don't see that, you can just go to window and timeline. That will bring it open and we can just bring it in here. I like to pop mine up along the top like so. Come on, fit on, which it obviously is now not letting me do. So maybe I'll pop it in the bottom instead. <laughs> uh, okay. So there are two types of animation. Uh, frame by frame and video. I actually find it easier most of the time to work in the video timeline like so So I'm going to hit create video timeline What that will do is it will turn any layer that you've got into a video layer And it will give you a predetermined amount of time and an animation that is set at a predetermined frame rate and things like that If you want to edit anything to do with your setup of your document, which you probably will You can hit this little burger icon here and you can choose things like setting the timeline frame rate For example, I'm going to set mine to 12 frames per second like so which is the same as animating on twos at 24 frames a second if you know what that means if you don't whatever uh, set it to how many pictures you want to draw per second of footage for me 12 seems plenty that's kind of the standard um, you can then also enable things like onion skin from under this menu as well but we'll get to that when we actually start drawing okay so you can see here I have a five second timeline like so, and I can scrub through and obviously nothing's animated yet because I haven't made anything. Can zoom in using this and so on and so forth. Now, when you create layers in this palette here, that will just create a static layer that is not a video. You can tell it's a video layer because it has this little icon here. So what I'm going to do first is actually just some normal Photoshop stuff just to show you guys how it works here, where I'm just going to draw and fill in my background. Okay, I've got some colors set up here and I've got myself a nice brush. So I'm just going to go down to my brush tool like so, and I've got this sort of charcoal brush, which is quite large. Now, I've been using a um, tablet here to do this. You absolutely don't have to, um, but I'm doing it for this project just because I think it looks nice. Okay, so I'm just going to literally choose a background color, probably this dark red one. And to illustrate the fact that you can still paint normal colors, I'm just going to start filling this in. Now, in fact, what I'll probably do is I'll make the whole background red and hide that layer and then I know I can start drawing on top of this okay so if I create a new layer down here as well again this is not an animated layer um, you can see that if I make this layer visible and scrub through my timeline it exists for that entire length of the timeline and doesn't change okay this will be true for any layer that you create that isn't an animated layer okay so if I come through and I start bringing in this shape here now, obviously, for your design, for your animation, it'll be whatever you want. This one is actually part of a project called the Big 100 Project. And it's basically each artist is given a small chunk of a drawing, like you can see the line work here. And it's their task to sort of just go over the top of it, respect the original lines, but otherwise go nuts with their creations and just create a little animation that when all put together with the other artists work will form one large picture. OK. So that's what this sort of premise is, just in case you don't really know what I'm talking about when I mention the Big 100 project, that's all that it is. Okay, so I'm just going to keep editing this a little bit here. So don't worry too much about this bit, I'm just proving the fact that you can do normal Photoshop stuff whilst simultaneously actually creating a contribution to this Big 100 project. Okay, so that seems like a nice background for me. So. That there is going to be two static layers. Now, if I hide those, 
you can see I'm going to probably start animating these stars here and I'm going to want those to sort of flicker as they go along. So basically a new drawing every frame. To do that is nice and simple. You need to go to layer, video layers, new blank video layer. And you can tell the difference here because it changes in color when you create them. Okay. Now technically these are video layers. Okay. But they are only a single frame. You can see that this one here has our video icon. These have no icons at all. And this has like a smart imported smart object icon. Any frame with this, any layer with this video icon will change content depending on what frame you have selected in your animation. For example, if I want to make an animation that is one second long, very easy to do. I can just crop down my loop. So when I hit play here, it would only loop this one second of animation. And I can go through and let me just go to the first frame in my animation here. Uh, Photoshop has crashed. Lovely. And there we go. Just caught back up to itself again. So let me go to my first frame in my animation here. I'm going to make this brush nice and small. Probably choose a nice bright yellow. And I'm just going to zoom in over my guideline star here. And I'm just going to paint this little guy in. Oops, it's quite big. So, like so, I'm just going to paint this guy in. And then I'm also just going to give him some light around as well, nice and softly. So if we bring in our background layers, here's what I've done there. Nothing... Oops, nothing. Why do I keep messing that up? There we go. Nothing too crazy. Just bringing it in. Maybe increase the size of the thing there like that. Okay. So if I move on a frame, however, that drawing will then disappear, whereas the others have stayed. This is because this is a video specific animation layer, meaning you have to draw a new frame for every new content for every frame. Now, if you wanted a piece of content to be duplicated across frames, you can, of course, just copy said content, move over a frame, and paste in place. And you'll paste that frame so you have then two frames of the same content. However, we want this to change every frame. So instead, what we'll be doing on frame two is drawing a new star. However, I could just start drawing and kind of guesstimate by going uh, back and forth, like so. And then drawing a little bit, and then on oh no, that's quite big, uh, you know, like that. But however, that's probably not going to be super useful. Instead, that's where the thing called onion skin comes into play. So let me just erase what I've done here on, oops, not on frame one, <laughs> excuse me, on frame two. Just erase that. Uh, you want to go to this option here and you can see the onion skin settings is here and enable onion skin is here. So if I just choose enable onion skin, you can see that we can kind of see a ghost of our previous frame. So if we hide these frames in the background, Maybe not that background one, this red one, because it makes it easier to see. You can see that we can kind of see a little bit of our previous frame. So if we go to onion skin settings, we can say, let's see two frames before and two frames after. Okay. And it's going to go from max opacity 50 down to minimum opacity 25. Let's drop that to 15 and up this to 60, just so that we've got a little bit more um, options like so. Now, unfortunately, that is going to do every single frame. So it's going to look darker and darker as we move along. So what you can do if it's easy for you is you can just hide all your different options like so until you can see something. This might be the best way. Okay. And then I can move over to frame two and I can see that the ghost of my previous frame there. So I can start to cover that up nice and heavy and then move over a frame again. Like so you can set up shortcuts for these as well. Um, which if I remember where they are, I'll try and show you, uh, they are under edit keyboard shortcuts. Then you need to go to shortcuts for panel menus, scroll on down to timeline video, scroll down again. Oh, grabbing the pen on this, there we go. And there will be go to next and previous frame and you can set a shortcut for that. So I'm going to set next frame to be control full stop and previous frame to be control and comma. It says it's already in use for layer hide layers, but I never use that. So I'm just going to hit OK. Now I can navigate forth, back and forth with a keyboard shortcut, which is perfect for me. So I can now check whether um, I'm happy with those results and just keep on going through. So I can say I know, for example, I've got frames on my first three now and I don't on my fourth. So I can go enable on your skin and I can just use that as a background. Then control and full stop. Control and full stop. 
And I'm just trying to make these a little bit varied each time. So it does seem like there's a little bit of animation. And I'm going to go all the way through until my one second is up. Okay. Right, here we go. So let's bring in those other two layers again. So this one and the bottom one. And let's take a look at what we've got so far. Okay, so it looks a bit weird and janky at the moment. See it there, it sort of starts to highlight at the end. That's because we've left Enable Onion Skin on. If we turn that off and then we loop through our animation, we should get a pretty good look of what that's actually going to look like in the finished project. So there is part of our animation. Now, pretty much that's all we're going to be doing for this entire segment. Um, other than on this portion here, on this layer, I'm going to add a bit of green because... Uh, oops, I've gone back to my other brush. That's no good. I've lost my nice brush. Um, was I on this one? Yeah, that was the one. Uh, I'm going to go back through and start adding in the globe here. Because that's just where it was in the original piece. I know that that just happens to be part of a globe. So I'm just going to make that a bit blue there, like that. Okay. So... Essentially now, all we're going to be doing is going through creating different animations for each of these stars. So we're going to hide those two layers. We're going to go through and zoom in. And we're just going to go through and paint in the rest of these guides. So I'm going to choose a lighter color for this next star. Okay, so layer, new. Uh, sorry, layer, video layers. New blank video layer. That's going to create a new layer on top. We can just click and drag that to bring it back to the beginning. And we can start drawing in our star again. Okay, so I'm just going to increase my brush size a bit there. And draw in our star. Let's bring in that background because it's quite bright. Again, we'll turn on our onion skin. And we can navigate through our painting. Like so. So doing the same thing over and over again. Occasionally you may want to skip back to the first frame just to quickly reference how your original drawing matches up. So I can see that my star's starting to grow a little bit there. So I probably should try and bring that back in a little bit. Be more accurate in my initial circle. There we are. And keep going until we finished our second of footage. Now, obviously, this is quite a simple animation, but these principles would apply to any animation that you're doing. Um, this isn't really a how to animate, it's how to create an animation. Uh, if you want a how to animate tutorial, Alan Becker does some really good ones on the fundamentals of animation um, design. So check those out. Okay, that's the second star done. We'll just zoom out of here. Oops, a bit too far. And let's take a look at our animation. So you can see there's our twinkling stars there. So I'll just quickly finish up the other one. Maybe we'll do this one in a sort of lightish green color. We'll stop that. And we're going to need to go to layer, new video layer. Now you could do all of these on the same layer, but it just makes your life a bit harder later on. So I'm doing them all on their own blank layer. And what we can actually do is, because we know that we're only going to be having a looping second animation, we could probably just select all these layers and bring them down in length, like so. And we're gonna to go to layer, video layer, new blank video layer. That creates a video layer here. All I've done here is just quickly trim these down so they're not just dragging themselves off the edge of the screen. And we're gonna hide this background layer and just start painting it in. And just to illustrate a point that necessarily you don't need the uh, onion skin tool if you have a guide layer, is that I can just quickly fill in that star size and then just go a bit nuts on the glow okay like so so just fill this guy in as long as i'm lighter on the pressure on the star around it it should look pretty much okay for the rest of this animation there we go nearly there okay so Again, this isn't really a how to animate tutorial, more like a how to create an animated GIF. So I'm not going to spend much more time than that on the animation. Let's bring in those other visible layers back and let's take a quick look. All right, so there's our animated GIF. 
nothing incredible, but it serves to illustrate a point. Once you are happy with that, you can cap off where you want your export duration to be, which is by dragging these handles in and out like so. Okay. And you can go to file, export, save for web. Now this says it's legacy, but it's probably still the best way to create an animated GIF. So when that window pops up, you just need to go over to preset and choose the highest div that you want. This is quite a short one, so we can probably get away with GIF 128 dithered. You can see that's only gonna be 140 kilobytes. My size is gonna be 214 by 384, and you want the looping animation to be, well, whatever you want. In my case, forever. We can hit play, take a look at that, and there you go. It's gonna be our looping GIF. Once you hit save, it will just ask you where you want to save it. I'm going to save it in Big 100 Project. I'm going to call it 1 out of 100 test. And then I'm just going to hit save. If we then navigate to that folder, we should be able to see our animated GIF in action. And it really is as simple as that. Doing it in Photoshop, quite limiting in terms of animation. Uh, a little bit backwards in the way you have to think of things, but if you've never done any animation before, it's not necessarily going to be a problem for you. So you can get some really cool brushes and some really cool animations out of this. Hopefully that was useful to you guys. Good luck in the competition if you're running it. If you're not, what are you doing? Go and sign up. It's really cool. You can find out all the details in the description below. Otherwise, have a great day, and I'll see you all next time on TipTut and next time on The Big 100 Project. Remember to subscribe for more tips, tricks, and tutorials. Thanks for watching.